it is definitely a, a transformational moment right now, um, and, and Edelman is, is definitely kind of acknowledged that, and that's part of why, you know, 10 years ago they invested in digital, and, and now they have the largest digital firm in addition to having the, 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 the largest PR firm, and so they, they were kind of future-proofing even back then. Um, in the development of a team like mine, I think Stephen speaks more to that wanting to be at the tip of that spear because, uh, you know, the ground has changed beneath everyone's feet. Um, the idea of, of influence, it used to be like, well, if we can get the New York Times to kind of look at us as a brand, well, then we're there. Well, now it's PewDiePie, who has a larger audience than the New York Times, you know, with 40 million subscribers compared to... Wait, you know, you're wrong. You have to look at the counters. <laughs> exactly. He literally, he literally, he literally accrues every, uh, every, every, every minute. Um, so, so when you start to think as a brand, okay, I, I want a story told on my behalf, um, before it was easy, it was going to those writers and those, those journalists that were so much an important part of that. So, and it's not to say they're not important today, they still are. It's just that it's now part of a larger puzzle that you're putting together when it comes to telling the story on the entirety of the brand. And in the instance of, of utilizing influencers, it's not that they're going to replace you know, mainstream media in any shape or form. It's just going to be a very different approach and it has to be uh, you know, comprehensive. You, you can't just do PR, I think, anymore and, and, and still tell the same stories when your competitors are really kind of dominating across those other platforms in ways that are reaching, especially the millennial audiences that you're going after, which is really, I mean, every brand I talk to, they're like, well, okay, we want the millennials. And so now, you know, they don't they don't watch TV, they don't they don't read newspapers in the volumes that Gen Xers like myself or, or you know, generations before. Uh, they are consuming video in masses amount on their mobile phones. So how do we get there, right? And so making sure that we change the way we approach the entire program, I think, is really uh, is what, what is important. And for a firm like Edelman, demonstrating the fact that okay, oh, the world is going to be very different in 10 years, and will we use PR in the same way? I, I highly doubt that. It's very much a system where um, it, it feels as equitable as a system I believe can be because uh, at any point the audience can turn and look left. You know, and, and, they, and, and every influencer who's, who's made a career doing this, and I've, I've worked with many of them and helped many, many of their careers, uh, they understand the ephemeral nature of that. They understand that at any point, you know, YouTube, so I say it's a revolving door, and it's like, who's going to be next? You know, I saw many careers rise and fall in a very short period of time, and so they all kind of have that understanding that this is a, a, a moment, <laughs> and they it capitalize as much as they can, but they know the next PewDiePie is just, you know, just six months away, and, and then it'll just keep going and going and going. I remember when PewDiePie only had 150,000 subscribers and no one knew who he was. You know, we, we were with him when I was at Machinima. Um, we never would have foresaw that what, what took place, and now has become this transformative face for you know in, across media, really. I mean, not just online video. To me, the the, the biggest gray area in landscape, across the landscape of influencer marketing um, is market value. Uh, what people are paying um, it sometimes astounds me. Um, in most in most cases, it's people who have not been experienced in this space, and so they get inflate the market. They wind up paying you know two, three x of what something actually probably should be worth if you break it down. Because because at the end of the day, you have to kind of demonstrate an ROI to a client. You have to say, listen, okay, you're, you're going to take TV dollars, you're going to take something from this other bucket of money, you're going to put in this new thing, and I'm going to explain why, because there's going to be data to support that, and that's right now is, I think, the best argument to make to any, you know, CMO there is, because at the end of the day, they have to justify the investment. You can't just do this shiny new thing, it's just like the cool thing to do, and so, so one of the ways to do that is, is making sure that you're pricing against whether it's an effective CPV, or making sure that you're going to get engaged views um, across a certain activation, and what the value of that view is, and compare that to what you would otherwise spend views on, whether that's a true view activation, or Facebook activation and so really trying to understand that landscape in a way that allows you to then negotiate with the influencers themselves like listen this is an opportunity um, for you and as you know this is a you know short ride that you're on and, and I want to obviously you want to do right by them because you want to be able to do you know, more than one deal with them at the same time um, I've just seen so many instances where people have just so overpaid and then it makes it challenging to come in and, and try and get one of those people who's already been paid an immense amount of money for what they've done when the, the RI really isn't there you know uh, that makes it challenging. As we see the decline in, 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 in cable subscribers, as we see that, that you know, the sense of like, okay, is this really the best place to go after certain audiences? Um, I've definitely seen uh, with brands that I've worked with uh, a, a sense to want to move some of that money away from uh, from television over to digital and, and more specifically to, to digital influencers. Um, and part of it's just because there's just, there's just increasingly more and more data to support the fact that if you want a millennial audience, whether that's a younger millennial um, or even an older millennial audiences, they're not in TV in the volumes that they used to be. Or, um, you know, whether they're cord cutters or, or cord nevers. Um, and as you see you know, the, the decline of, of, of subscriptions, that, that I think it only attests that even further. Because um, my guess would be that the, the, the subscriptions are probably dying off around that young, younger part of the demographic, for sure. It's definitely not um, the older folks, um, would be my guess. And as, as brands shift away from that, then it's about, okay, can we demonstrate something that is actually a uh, sound investment? And so that's where I think the money becomes important, back to my other point, is to really demonstrate, okay, you, you didn't take 
a flyer of a bet right here. You actually put money in a situation that actually can be demonstrated that, that, that gave back some sort of um, uh, you know, ROI that is really cost effective, whether that is getting uh, the broadest reach possible for, for the dollar, whether it's getting a, a very engaged audience. And again, I think part of what comes into this conversation is understanding how do we measure these things? Like, uh, for example, what, what's the value of views? One of the things that's constantly um, being contested, you know, there's a Facebook three second autoplay, the same as a YouTube engage, you know, click to, to, uh, to start play a video view, the same. Um, is, is you know, fa that Facebook video more valuable because it has 4x uh, uh, the engagement than typically the YouTube video does? Um, I mean, again, these are things that, I mean, I think no one's figured out just yet, and even myself, it, you know, we're constantly trying to triangulate that and understand what the effect is of that in the marketplace. Um, but we do know is that, I mean, that when influencers say, hey, try this, or hey, I, you know, I, I recommend this to you, I mean, that, that, that millennials, if, if no other demographic does, millennials do follow and listen to that. And as a marketer, I think you have to see the value in that um, because the attribution models that TV has always constructed, I, I think, are so far removed from having that moment of connect that, that a YouTube influencer or, or, or a Snapchatter has with his or her audience that allows them to say, okay, we are connected this way so much that you will trust me. And it goes back to what we always believe is the best form of advertising, right? Word of mouth. <laughs> and essentially, that's what a, a influencer marketing is with a giant microphone in between, right? Because it, the, because in many cases, these millennials see these people as as, as a um, as a cohort, as someone who they feel is, is, is a quote-unquote friend. And so I think that's part of why it's effective.